In the last episode, I told you about the spider pride, the pride males, the West Street males, and the Mapojos who grew up to independence, and their leader Makulu. In this episode, I'm going to introduce you to each member of the coalition and I'm going to tell you how they got their first territory. Rangers named the Mapojo around 2007 after they had become territorial. Some say they got named after security company, meaning operating together. Others say Mapojo is Swazi, which loosely translates into tiger. Their individual names, on the other hand, had been given by rangers of different areas. That would explain why some of them had gotten more names than one. Makulu was the oldest and at the beginning of 2006 he was around 7 years old. He was already in his prime and he was the leader of the brotherhood. Makulu was a very big lion, with a beautiful black mane and a unique, powerful roar. Rangers described him as a big, magnificent lion. He radiated confidence and authority and he was seen many times alone on patrol. There was no doubt amongst the rangers that he was the most dominant and the leader of the pack. Pretty Boy and Rasta were the oldest of the Sparta brothers. They were littermates and they were called the twins. Pretty Boy was often seen with Makulu patrolling together, while Rasta enjoyed the company of Scar. Rangers described him as an incredibly good-looking male. However, Pretty Boy was a fighter and he survived a couple of fights with other lions. He suffered some serious injuries in those fights, but he always pulled the strength to recover from it. One of these injuries left a deformation of the spine and that's why rangers caught him later in life, Bent Spine. Another name he had gotten from other rangers was Leonidas. He was Makulu's closest companion and the bond they shared would last until their final days. His little mate Rasta enjoyed the company of Scar aka Dreadlocks. They went together on patrol and they were seen many times lying next to each other. Rasta got his name from something that had been caught in his mane. Some knots in the mane under his chin had formed a kind of dreadlock. And rangers used this feature for identification. Scar, who was also called dreadlocks, was a huge line as well, and he had a magnificent mane. He had a distinctive scar on his hip, and the tip of his tail was not as fluffy as the others. Pretty Boy, Rasta and Scar reached their prime end of 2006. They had formed a strong bond with Makulu, and they were loyal to him. Makulu was literally their big brother from the minute they were born. They grew up with him being around all the time. He was their mentor and their leader. That might also explain why the youngest Mr. T and Kinky Tail were not as devoted as their brothers to follow him. Mr. T and Kinky Tail were born when their older cousins were almost sub-adults. Their mothers chose to raise them apart from the pride, which limited the contact to Makulu and the others for their first two and a half years. Young males get chased out by their fathers when they are around three years old and their mothers show signs of being an estrus again. 
When Mr. T and Kinky Tail were born, only three of the West Street males were still alive. Instead of chasing Makulu and their older brothers out, the West Street males tolerated them longer than they would have in their younger years. They needed Makulu and the lionesses to provide them with regular kills. Even if a male lion is too old to provide for himself, he still can scent mark and roar, which keeps rivals at bay. The presence of the West Street males made it possible for Mr. T and Kinky Tail to grow up safely and their older cousins stuck around longer than usual. Being the youngest is not easy in lion society. Mr. T and Kinky Tail had to fight hard for their place on a carcass and later in life for mating rights. Among six males the competition is high. And when Mr. T and Kinky Tail reached their prime, they just had enough. Mr. T was the most recognizable amongst them. His mane had a distinctive mohawk style and that's why he was named after a TV character. Years later, when he killed the cubs of his brothers, he got nicknamed Satan. Kinky Tail was his loyal companion and they both were inseparable. Kinky Tail's distinctive feature was a broken tail and in other areas he had another name. There he was called Shaka. Apart from that, Mr. T and Kinky Tail spent almost all their time together. Even when their nomadic life was not as stressful as for other male lions who got chased out, they had to hunt to fend for themselves and they had to build up their confidence to become territorial. Being good hunters was the key to their success. And when Rasta, Pretty Boy and Scar reached their prime in 2006, the testosterone was running high. That's when Makulu knew they were ready to fight for a territory. In 2006, 11 lion prides called Sabi Sand their home. At the time, nine males divided by six coalitions were dominant in the area. Except for the four newcomers in the north, there were rather small coalitions and no match for six young and strong Mapoho. Makulu laid eyes first on the Ottawa Pride to the west. The Ottawa Pride had three lionesses and eleven cubs of different ages. Their protector was a single male named Languleni. He was also dominant over the two lionesses of the Sand River Pride who had no cubs at the time. In the evening hours of June 9, 2006, Makulu left his brothers and went after Languleni. The fight itself had not been witnessed, but rangers could tell what was going on by just listening to the noise they made. Langolini appeared a couple of days later with a badly swollen face. He was in company of the Ottawa Pride and that was the last time he was seen. Whether he got killed or chased out, no one knows for sure. The fight had cost Makulu a broken canine, but apart from that, he had only minor injuries. After Langolini was gone, the Ottawa Pride was there for the taking. The first lionesses though, who were to mate with the Mapojo, were the two lionesses of the Sand River Pride. They had no cubs and they accepted the new males right away. The Ottawa lionesses on the other hand were not so eager. Only after the Mapojo had killed all their cubs, they were slowly coming around. Fighting amongst the brothers for mating rights is very common and Makulu usually was the first to claim a lioness in estrus. The estrus cycle of a lioness lasts about a week. 
that gives the lioness the opportunity to mate with his brothers and to make sure that the offspring will be acknowledged by each member of the coalition. A male that didn't mate with her poses a high risk for the survival of her cubs. That happened with the first litters the Ottawa lionesses gave birth to. Those cubs were killed by Makulu's companions. Luckily, it takes more than one cycle for a lioness to get pregnant. Her Easter cycle repeats every three weeks and that ensures that she has the chance to mate with every member of the coalition and make them think they are the fathers. Only a couple of weeks after they conquered their first territory, the Mapojo brothers set their sight to the east. It was the territory of the Shimungwe pride and their pride male Tsunani. Like Langolini, Tsunani had no coalition partner. While Makulu was busy mating with the two Sand River lionesses, his five brothers made their way to the east. At the beginning of 2006, the Shimungwe pride had six lionesses and 12 subadults. The Mapojo arrived at a time where the numbers of the Shimungwe pride was already dwindling down. They just had lost four subadults when park officials ordered to take them down after they saw them feeding on a dog carcass which had been tested positive for rabies. In addition to that, some of the older Pride members suffered from TB. When the Mapojo arrived, the downward spiral accelerated. Tsunani immediately realized when the Mapojo entered his territory. They were sent marking all over the place and they were roaring all night. Tsunani roared back, even though he knew he was up against five males. Later that night, they found him on his last territorial patrol. The next morning, rangers reported they had found Tsunani. He hadn't survived the attack. After the tragic loss of their protector, the Shimungwe pride went into freefall. Four of the eight subadults got killed and possibly some of the lionesses. By the end of 2006, only one adult lioness and four subadults were still alive. Luckily for them, three of the subadults were females and if they would survive, they would have the chance to build up the pride to its former glory. But for now, they were on the run. They were still too young to mate with the Mapojo, and the adult lioness kept a low profile and avoided them at all cost. On a positive note though, at the beginning of 2007, five cubs were born into the Sand River Pride. All five cubs were males, and their two mothers raised them well. As I already mentioned, the first cubs that were born into the Ottawa Pride did not survive. Most, if not all of them, were victims of infanticide. When Mr. T and Kinky Tail approached their prime, the fight amongst the males was getting fiercer by the second. The two youngest Mapoho wanted their own prides and that determination led them back east. In terms of line dynamics, 2006 and 2007 were rocky, to say the least. The arrival of the Mapojo in the western sector affected four line prides. The Sand River, the Ottawa, the Shimungwe and the Ravenscourt pride. Only two members of the Ravenscourt had survived, a young female and a young male. They were lucky enough to link up with their relatives from the Shimungwe pride. Although the Mapojo were only focused on the western sector, the dynamics in the east shifted as well. In 2006, one of the split frog males had died from TB. 
his brother Scar couldn't hold on to his territory and got ousted by the two roller coaster males. The two roller coaster had taken over the Spider Pride and were even looking further to expand their territory. They moved up north and targeted Rocky, the Pride male of the Tsilala Pride. But they were not the only ones, the Mapoho had the same idea. Driven by Mr. T and Kinky Tail's urge to conquer more prides and land, it came to an inevitable showdown. In the next episode you will learn why Mr. T and Kinky Tail split from their brothers and what happened to the males who clashed with the Mapoho in February 2007.